Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham! Presents, with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime co-host, Miss Purrington. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy, including those passing through or those calling in to Austin. You can keep up with us on Twitter and Instagram at Comedy Wham! or on our Comedy Wham! Facebook page. If you're listening to this on a podcast, please rate and review us on iTunes. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham! brings you articles, album reviews, and live shows featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations and will usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And today we have a very special treat. I am doing a rare phone call with a comic, and I would say this is tagging on to our Austin Television Festival from back in May, where we got to meet some of the cast from Letterkenny. Their season is launching in the U.S. on Hulu on October 14th, and if you're a Canadian listening, on Crave TV on October 11th. So that's a sneak peek for you as to who we're talking to. So now, Comedy Wham! presents our guest. All right, well, today we are talking to a comic with a long list of TV credits, Uh, He's really good. He's uh, one of the best. He's been on all of the big name festivals, Just for Laughs and and Edinburgh, just to name two of the big ones. He regularly posts videos and the, I have to say that the Stress Tips series on his YouTube channel had me and my 13-year-old son losing our minds when we watched it. He wrote and performed on the John Doerr television show, and you know him as Donnie Mashman in season three of Fargo. And the reason we're talking to him today is he is coach on one of my all-time favorite TV shows, Letter Kenny, and I'm not fucking embarrassed to say that. Yeah, he's talking with us ahead of the season seven premiere of Letter Kenny on Hulu on October 14th and October 11th if you're a Canadian watching on Crave TV. And now Comedy Wham! presents our guest, Mark Forward. Holy shit. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, this is such a pleasure to get to talk to you and meet you. And um, uh, if I could gush. Well, the pleasure's on my mind, Valerie. <laughs> if I could gush just a bit. It's not just me that's super excited to get to talk to you, but it is also my 13 year old who has also become a big fan of Letter Kenny. And when I told him, oh, I think I'm getting a chance to talk to Coach, and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's nice to hear. We appreciate you guys watching. Yeah. Um, I usually start these interviews with an icebreaker question, and that is one word to describe your past. Um, uh, dislike. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems very on brand for you. Uh, I've been listening to you on uh, Stuart Goldsmith's The Comedian's Comedian uh, episode with you from a couple of years back. Um, so it's, it's funny that you, you chose that word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of who I was, and, but I'm enjoying who I'm trying to become. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I like to do a... a, a Look into the past, obviously, with that word to, to trigger the conversation. But can can you share with with us your first co- your memories of your first comedic performance? I mean, are we going back to like grade three? Or are we like <laughs> talking like professionally? Or I mean, in my kitchen at my home? <laughs> I, Actually, I mean, I'm, I yeah. I remember being uh, I was I was. I was riffing. I was about eight. Uh, My sister was killing us. I was laughing. I don't even remember. It was something about Star Wars. And I was killing. And then I went too far and I lost her. And I will never forget that moment. (laughs) That I realized, okay, you gotta, you gotta be careful. You can't just get high on the laugh. You gotta, Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just throw whatever. So that's what stuck with me forever. I thought it would be the first real memory of, 
bombing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's that's a that's a, a fair memory. A lot of the the folks that I talk to will think of a situation in the family, you know, within the home where mm-hmm. where they they remember something really vivid. Uh, one of the things. Totally. I mean, I remember all bombing too. So. <laughs> Well, see, the bombings I remember, hmm. the uh, great shows, I couldn't tell you when I had one. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, with with the credits that you've had, I mean, you, you've clearly had great shows, so. Well, uh, people are completely delusional, <laughs> really. I don't know. Well, let oh, them I got be. a lot let of dirt be. on a lot of people. <laughs> You got a thirteen-year-old kid who's delusional right now, so you know. Let's let's, <laughs> let's ride with it. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the things that I was researching about you is that you started in theater, and you abandoned theater to pursue stand-up comedy. And I want to ask you: Did you know immediately that that was the right choice to make, or did it take a little bit of time before you realized? Oh, yeah, I'm much more satisfied. Uh, I I wouldn't say it was immediate. I mean, I did three years of theater school, and then I did about two years of professional theater. I was very lucky to get out of school and actually work. Mm. Um, But it never sat right with me. It never felt right with me. I never felt... I saw all the other actors with this, you know, drive and and want of it, and I, um, I wasn't sure that was exactly for me. And then I did a play where the guy who was starring in it owned the rights to the play, but the director wanted me, so he cast me, but then this guy wouldn't talk to me for two months of rehearsals, and he would only talk to me uh, in character on stage. So that was my last play, and I said, uh, how can I remove all the other actors Mm -hmm. (laughs) from the situation? Um, so I, I went to stand up. I mean, I love acting, but I, I just wasn't a theater actor. I just, I never say the word passion or, uh, <laughs> I'm quite aware I could do other jobs. You know, it's always, yeah. it's always actors saying, well, I couldn't do anything else. Yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah, you could. And you have. <laughs> yeah. How, for the, for the, for those of us that are listening, um, I'm going to take an opportunity to do a little bit of education. Would you be able to describe what the difference is between uh, being a theater actor and being a TV actor? And it doesn't have to be uh, elaborate. One pays you? Oh, okay. that was one of the, yeah, I figured one pays one, more. <laughs> one pays the bills and... Uh... <laughs> You know, one, you get to walk around in stinky mothball clothing and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and pretend you're a king. Uh-huh. I don't know. Uh, they're, they're both great. I mean, they're, they're, they just, you know, sometimes things don't fit. And uh, theater did not fit for me. Yeah. And the repetitiveness of theater. Mm. I mean, I have a hard enough time doing stand-up the same joke over and over. So um, theater was just, just not for me. Yeah. So I had to find somewhere else to utilize that outlet. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's our education segment of, of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> TV and film pays the bills and uh, theater um, fills your soul, I guess. Not mine, <laughs> but apparently others. Yeah. Okay. So you... you, you triggered me with my next question by talking about fashion. Right. Uh, I, and I've heard you talk about this, and I think it's really interesting that fashion has come up a, a few times uh, in, in this podcast where people will have a certain aesthetic or a certain look when they go on stage. And I think people would really benefit from hearing your take on your particular uh, aesthetic on stage. Uh, that I just wear hoodies and jeans? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to me, it's about the jokes. Mm-hmm. So I I didn't want to be known as the guy with the bow tie or the guy with the funny hair. Um, and also hoodies come out of my side of him. So 
that's uh, that's how I ended there. And I mean, you bring a hoodie and jeans to uh, a TV shoot, they can't say, "Oh, that doesn't work," because it does. Mm-hmm. So when they say bring three outfits, I bring one, and um, I think that's just where I live. I, I maybe I said something different another time, but I just. Uh, I, my top rows are scenario on why I wear it. Yeah. Well, I, the, the, the... It's also all I own, Valerie. Oh, goodness. Well, uh... Like I'm a cartoon character. I just have black hoodie and jeans God. in it, my closet. It just dawned on me, this is this is part of the connection with my 13-year-old. That's all I, I he owns, is hoodies. <laughs> so, wow, he's, he's, yeah. he's a very <laughs> fashionable young man. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this interview is just turning to be all about him now. Let's just talk about yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, why didn't you just why didn't you just call him up and interview him? <laughs> well, Jeez. you know, he's not on my favorite TV show, so that's, that's part of it. <laughs> uh, well, w- one of the things that that came up, and and it is something that anybody who's pursuing comedy should be mindful of is part of it for you. What I heard, and I think this came up in Stuart Goldsmith's, and I highly recommend that, that people go check out the that podcast and that episode, uh, part of it for you or the discussion that happened around your choice of, of wearing the hoodie and jeans is focus on the jokes. You know, what it, yeah. you know, I want to be comfortable and my focus is, being as funny as I possibly can and not using those, um, you know, the, the fashion to speak. Um, and so there's, you know, it's, it's a ph- philosophy that, that exists out there. Do you, do you dress up, uh, because you have a story to tell and you want people to know that just by the visual cue or do you want to peop- do you want people to strictly focus on the words coming out of your mouth? Yeah. I said that pretty much, yeah. but not as eloquently. Oh, please stop! <laughs> uh, no, I had go. more red wine in me when we did the Goldsmith interview. I had more uh. red wine in me, so I was probably more <laughs> introspective and uh, eloquent. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my uh, my next. Um, I'm sorry, this is sounding very okay. Chop, chop. Here, here's my my questions. But I I have a certain no. flow that I envisioned with this, and now I want to start talking about your move into television and film because you've, you've been doing stand up, and then you start doing TV and film work. And what was the the impetus or move for that? We've established that it's paying the bills helps. Yeah. But was there more? Was there more to it? Mm-hmm. Um, not really. I mean, <laughs> um, I was doing TV commercials before I was doing stand-up. Ah. Uh, because, again, it paid the bills. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, through stand-up, I met John Dore, who now lives in the States. And he had a television program up here in and I was doing some writing on that, and then I would do little guest appearances. And I mean, um, I I don't think there was any conscious decision from me to be, oh, okay, now I'll do TV or film, or now I'll do this. I think I was always open to uh, doing lots of things, and that's what I have been doing. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's why I got into voice work, cartoon work, writing, and, you know, uh, I've written for shows and um I just I dabble in what I like and then and if I continue having joy from it then I continue doing it. Yeah. <clears throat> and the things I don't I stop. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Uh, makes because sense. Because I met too many bitter 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 mm-hmm. bitter old comics who always would say to me, You're gonna end up like me and I said, No goddamn <laughs> way am I gonna let that happen. The minute something doesn't feel good or fun, I'm out. Yeah. And, yeah. And that that ties into the philosophy that uh, you you have about uh, being. And this hasn't explicitly come out in, in any of the, the things that I've brought up. But you're you're based in Canada. You're in Toronto. Uh, yeah. So basically, yeah. I mean, you are a Canadian actor, performer, comic, and one of the conscious decisions that you've made is you're not 
leaving Canada, like many comics uh, who achieve success or want a different level of, of success, you know, American style success, you've made the conscious conscious decision that you're staying rooted in Canada. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no other profession where you get good at it and then they say, well, now you got to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I love this country, and no offense to your country, I'm <laughs> sure it's lovely. <laughs> Um, it pretty been. wacky right now, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I love this country and I've gotten to do a lot of great things from this country. I mean, I did Fargo from here. I did all my late night sets while living here. I didn't have to, <clears throat> I've just found a way. So I'm happy with those level. Yeah. I don't ever want to be huge anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I'm quite comfortable yeah. where I'm at. I couldn't handle all that. People knowing who you are all the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, true. terrible. Americans are a bit obnoxious on that front. And I will admit that I, I can be obnoxious if I, if I find a comic that, you know, I've admired for a long while. So it's a good thing that, that we're doing this by phone um, because I, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Look, if I, I go a walk, I go for a walk every morning and I, said good morning to this one woman one time and now I have to do it every time. That's the kind of person I am. I'm like, I blew it. I blew it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You had to be nice. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just pretty low-key, private, like keep to myself. And uh, this business, you know, that's that's hard. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm always gracious to anybody that knows my work. Yeah. Um, Yeah. it's It's a weird place to live in. But, yeah. Yeah. I just like it here, and uh, and I don't think, uh, I mean, I've seen the world because of it, so there's no need to uh, move for me. Yeah, and that that is a... But a, man, do people on Twitter like to tell you you're a piece of garbage, uh, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've never on. heard of you, you piece of garbage. <laughs> I've never heard of you. That's the biggest insult on Twitter that yeah. they can come up with. <laughs> It's like, we'll do like, some research. Okay. Big deal. It's you know just so I mean? easy. Like I, it's so I easy. hadn't heard of Chipotle sauce, but that doesn't mean... <laughs> it, 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 that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and it's not delicious. You know, like... <laughs> well, it's such a weird thing to say to someone. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, good old Twitter. Because I wouldn't want to meet the guy who knows everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that guy would be more crazy than me. <laughs> I know every actor and comedian. <laughs> yeah, that I'm person... glad people don't know things. People shouldn't know everything. That's insane. <laughs> anyway. I'm sorry. I no, went off out there. I'm I, sorry. No, no, no. No no apology needed. That's, that's so, so Canadian, too. You know, this, this apologizing for things. Um, okay, so then we go into television film, and I will admit that I'm that you know because I've loved the show so much, I've been absorbing. And I I, I spoke to Kay Trevor Wilson because uh, I knew mm-hmm. he was a comic, and he came down for Moon Tower, which I'm you know cross my fingers you can get down here for Moon Tower Comedy Festival, and then oh that'd be lovely. Yeah, that uh, it's a it's a fun festival, and they they actually had a Canadian showcase. They had Kay Trevor. They had they actually had John Dore was was the uh, mm-hmm. host for that evening, and Deanne Smith, Nathan McIntosh, some of whom have made that decision to move away, or some in Deanne's case to move up uh, to Canada. <laughs> Uh, and uh-huh. uh, one of the things that I've noticed about uh, your uh, apologies for saying it this way, your online presence is you're posting a lot more digital shorts on your YouTube mm-hmm. page. And yeah. uh, the stress tips was fabulous. Uh, oh, even, thank you. Even though that's a couple of years old, I would love to see that come back because it's. Uh, I would too. I, I did those with a guy named Dave Dunville and he amazing and brilliant and he has like this whole studio in his in his bag and he's just uh he's just amazing and i I, and we've talked about it so hopefully we can uh we can do those again yeah and uh, it was funny because they came out of nowhere Hmm. um 
we had an, another idea where I was going to interview people, and um, I said to Dave, I, said, I, I don't think I can do it. I, <laughs> I don't think I have that in me uh. to just walk up to humans. <laughs> um, so, so, so I said, well, what about this? And then we just, we just ran with it. So it's, uh, thank you for acknowledging them and seeing them. Like, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're short watches, but they pack a, a pretty good punch. And I just, uh, there's, you know, sometimes simplicity goes a long way and just the, the opening of, Hi, I'm Mark Forward. This is Stress Tips with Mark Forward. Hi, I'm Mark Forward. Just that re- repetition and simplicity is enough. Yeah. To get a laugh. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so Thank I, you. And I, uh, I, I actually interacted with you on Twitter because you recently posted the guy who hasn't spoken yet this morning, and I yeah. thought that was just great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Was I kind? Uh, yes, you were, and I and I could. T- I, okay. I'd been studying. You know, this is this is definitely my personality. I've been studying your your you know how you interact with with fans, and I knew that I probably wouldn't get a response, but at least I got a like. And I figure, you know, it, that makes sense. You kind of want to make you know feel the waters, make sure that somebody isn't the oh I've never heard of you type trying to <laughs> you know pull you into something, but. Uh, I yeah. try. I, I had a. I had a. Uh, uh, was it a mantra? I, had, I. I. I really wanted to. I used to reply to every single person, mm. and I just. It's harder now, um, but uh, I'm sorry. I only I, I try my best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Valerie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't take it personally. I really didn't. I mean, I'm getting to talk to you now. I mean, what, you know, what more can I ask Yeah, there you for? go. <laughs> I just, I just find sometimes you say, like, people go, this is really funny. Then you say, thank you. And then they say the worst thing. <laughs> right. They're just baiting you. That's awful. That's they just, so awful. They just blow it. I've learned that compliments should be one sentence. If everyone can learn. <laughs> When you're complimenting, if it has more than one sentence, you're saying things that are not needed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> and what was the one I got yesterday was like, I know you're only known for coach, <sighs> but I want you to know I like one of your jokes. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> there's, a, there's a compliment in there somewhere, little friend. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that is... Uh, <laughs> Oh, it really does not take that much research to find out you're known for more than that. So, uh, with wow, that. the other I, and I hate to say this, but they were American. Oh, Americans, yeah, we're there's lazy. no nothing else happening in the world. <laughs> no other countries have TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, it, I, I think we're we're heading into the second uh, half of of, uh, of the this interview, and now it's it's time to to dig into the only role that you're known for, Mark. Frankly, yeah, the only one. <laughs> I'm ready. All right, let's talk about Coach. It was on Ivy oh. Way. It was a movie of the week. Oh. <laughs> I had two lines. No, can't go. <laughs> Oh, I actually watched your demo, and I need to go find this Mr. D because the clip that you included in your demo that's on YouTube, <laughs> that was hilarious. So I've got to figure out how to He's watch a pretty you. minister of character. He was, uh, <laughs> he was adopted by Chinese parents uh, from China, oh. and, he, and uh, he adopted a, a black kid that goes to school there. Uh-huh, yeah. So, and he's just a mental librarian. It was a pretty fun role to play. Yeah, it, it looked, it looked yeah. like a, you were having fun with that one. Yeah, he's a psycho. All but, right. So, yeah. Mark, important question. Which, yeah. which NHL Cute. team do you root for? I root for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Okay. I take a lot of heat from Larry Kenny, uh, Cass, <laughs> but yes, I, I root for them fully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I figure I had to I had to do a softball there for you. Um, <laughs> so, is there anything that you would want to share with audiences about how you got picked up as the role of coach 
on on the show? Well, like most of my roles that I've ever gotten, it was somebody else's role first. Mm. True little, there's a little nugget. Wow. Um, yeah, I got Fargo because uh, Galifianakis backed out. Huh. I got my role in Mr. D because uh, they didn't cast the woman they were going to cast. And on Leonard Kenny, they had, they had a former hockey player, I believe, that was going to be coach. Um, but I had worked with Jacob before mm-hmm. and he thought of me and, and, uh, they just brought me in. So, oh, wow. yeah, it was terrifying that first day because normally when you audition, you, you know, they've seen an idea of what you are going to bring to the role. Mm-hmm. But when people have confidence in me, that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> that's more terrifying. The expectations are too high. Oh, no. When they go, oh, this guy can do it. Bring him in. You're like, no. <laughs> let me let me fail a couple of times before you bring me in. Uh, so then you get, you know, Jared's writing, which is for the coach in the early years, was like a page and a half monologue of words. I was like, I don't even know what. <laughs> I don't even know what some of these words are. Uh, but they were great. It, they both welcomed me and the cast and the crew and um, yeah, and I mean, what, what a great role! You get to go in and scream your head out, head off at the people you work with, and <laughs> and uh, he's a great guy to play. He's so so screwed up, <laughs> but oh. but yet you still like him. So yeah, um, yeah. How uh, how true to Mark Forward, the comic on stage. We don't have to talk about Mark Forward at home, but how true to Mark Forward on stage is Coach? Because there's a little, you know, as the seasons progress, you realize there's a softness, a very uncomfortable softness and and sweet spot, you know, for, you know, the dearly departed barbs that the Coach (laughs) often thinks about. But it it is generally all kicking things and screaming at people. Um, I mean... Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's this. I'd say there's twenty percent of that in my stand-up. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's just a, it's just a, something I'm lucky. I I realized in high school I could say things to people I didn't like and they would laugh. Mm. That's a gift, and uh, it's a gift uh, that I try to use only for good. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just realized that. You know, I can tell a crowd that they're the worst crowd in the world, and they they enjoy it and they see through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they see that that's not all that there is to a thing. So, yeah, one of your recent uh, clips that people can watch it's uh, I think it's from Just for Laughs. I'm pretty sure it's from Just for Laughs. But you open up, you know, with that that trademark i'm gonna call it now your trademark you know i'm i'm good i'm the best and then you say you know Mm -hmm. i know people are here just waiting to hear something that they can be offended by and you launch into a a really pretty funny bit that i won't spoil um and so it is kind of funny that you're you're expecting that and you're kind of engaging with that you know stop judging me kind of thing um, yeah, but we're still laughing with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's. I've said some of the most worst things to <laughs> audiences, and they just come along. Um, even when they're being great, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> I'll just throw in your terrible, just uh, just cause, and, they, and they'll always play along. They just they just yeah, the people are smart. They can just read through or see through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Truth, but yeah, no, I've been pretty lucky. I mean, I can do, I can do absurd, and I can do, you know, topical, and I can do, and people seem to allow me. Where, you know, some comics have to stick to one sort of genre. Yeah, yeah. One of so I I I hate to engage in this because I know you must get this all the time. So I try to write this in. Uh, the most okay. uh, creative way so that you wouldn't roll your eyes and say, everybody asks me this all the time. Uh, well, I'm fat because 
Is that was that where you were going to go? No, no, no. I was going to ask you your trademark. <laughs> no, God, Mark. This is by phone. I can't even see. Well, you might have just done. I have anxiety <laughs> and I eat too much when I'm sad. <laughs> Alcohol, you know, plays a part. <laughs> no. I'm trying to walk every morning. I, you know, stop. Everyone asking me why I'm so fast. Look, I'm the last <laughs> person to. No, what shame, was you? So. <laughs> Your tra- what was your question? Okay, so your trademark phrase is something yeah. that I use at least two to three times a day. And to, <laughs> to me, this is a which came first, the chicken or the egg question. Uh, was the phrase right. written into the script or was it something that you said off the cuff? Because I think that's a very likely thing as f- if you've got a comic that you're working with and then combined with your ability to do that, uh, you know, kicking of trash cans, that this became an anthem of sorts. This is a question I've asked before and I don't <laughs> remember. <laughs> this is the kind of question that I should have some wonderful anecdotes <laughs> or how it all broke down. Uh-huh. I don't remember. I do know I don't improvise a lot because Jared puts a lot of great stuff on the page. Yeah. And if he did write it, I would hate to say <laughs> that I came up with it. Um, <laughs> but if I did come up with it, he'd be the first to say that I did. Uh-huh. So I don't, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. And I, uh, yeah. So okay. it's a great thing that has its own length in life now. And uh, yeah, I don't, I have no idea. What's the cringiest example that you've seen of of it being used? <laughs> <laughs> Towards me? No. Towards you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's some there's some pretty unfunny memes. Is it memes or memes? Memes. Memes. There's some pretty unfunny memes out yeah. there. Um but when I, I like it when someone saw, I see that they followed me on Twitter that day and then they say it and they say, they think I'm the, I'm the first one. Uh-huh. I'm the first one that's ever said this. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's fun and I love it. But you know, when you post like, I don't know, a picture of a sunset on Instagram and people just put fucking embarrassing. It's like, I don't even know what, I don't even know what you're going for. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I could post, here's my newborn baby. Oh, fucking embarrassing. Well, I don't, what, what? <laughs> that would be pretty cool. I don't even see the connection. <laughs> uh, and if, a, if, if an NHL coach, uh, there was a couple, during the playoffs, I think it was St. Louis, he actually mouthed that. So, oh, oh my Twitter, my Twitter just blew up. Yeah. But it, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, it it, it must. Uh, I, I do recognize that the writing is so. There's an element that has to be scripted because it is so rich in wordplay and particular ways of telling a story that uh, totally. You know, if it was just thought, oh, you know, we'll have the coach say this the first time that it happened, and then. Uh, Jared and Jacob and and Mark realizing, oh, this is comedy gold. We have to weave this in, you know, almost every episode that you appear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. it's uh, it's it's you know, it's 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 great. Yeah. I love to be like, if I'm being honest, I love that coach is is growing. Mm-hmm. Um. Because he, he, you know, they could have just left Coach behind and yeah. kept going, um, but the way that we found and the way Jared stayed committed to this character, and now we're learning about, you know, kind of where the anger's coming from, mm-hmm. and yeah, piece by piece. Um, yeah, the yeah, it, it, it's so fun to play. Yeah, the character development through the holiday episode, which oh. <laughs> So awkward. Uh, <laughs> and then the Valentine's episode, you know, just more awkward goodness, but it's, oh, it's also good. I mean, the whole, everybody's character has a lot of awkward. Uh, uh, totally. Uh, 
Um, all right. Totally. <laughs> but isn't it crazy? There's so much awkwardness in that town. And so much, but everybody's sort of there for everybody, even if you're the biggest asshole. Exactly. It's like right. And that was a lesson. Coach is a monster. <laughs> Coach would never be invited anywhere. <laughs> That's true. But in Larry yeah. Kenny, he's yeah. He's still you know. Yeah. He's still part of the gang, so yeah. that's great. And that was a lesson that was taught, you know, in at the end of the first season, where everybody rallied around um, Stuart because he, yeah, you know, he was he was a skid, and everybody hated him. But by at the end of the season, you know, yeah, you, when your friend asks for help, you you help him. Help and, you help him. That's right. So that's a, a recurring theme, um, and I think that's that's part of why everybody relates and, and likes the show. Um, all right, so Agreed. we are coming up on the season seven release in the states. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is October fourteenth, thanks to Hulu. And if you're on the Canadian side, you get you get it earlier on October eleventh. Yeah, we get it three days earlier. Um, okay, so I think that's just to make the Canadians feel like they're still in charge. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, they're clearly superior <laughs> in many regards, so <laughs> we can say that. Uh, all right, so uh, obviously we want everybody listening to this to wait and, and enjoy Season 7 uh, without any spoilers from us, but I'm going to use my little tactic of the one word to describe your past to ask you one word to describe Coach's story arch in Season 7. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, that's like, there's so many words that came to my head, but, um, uh, it's just more, I say more, <laughs> more. yeah, just more of that. Horrible man. (laughs) (laughs) And yet we all rally behind him. So, you know, it's good that we get more more of Coach. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's, uh, I had a lot of fun with this season. So I'm interested to see how people take it. Yeah. Oh, is there, is there any, um, yeah, I'm not really good with the, the, uh, how to phrase a question to make sure that you don't, uh, that we don't spoil anything. Anyone yeah. to spoil, but like, uh, well, I got to work with cast members I don't normally get to work with, ah, that's and cool. um, so that was fun. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just seeing more of uh, who ch- who coaches and yeah, what and his then, belief system is. <laughs> yeah. And then past season seven, we were getting eight, nine, and ten seasons. So there's even more, more to look forward to. Yeah, there's more coming down the road. I mean, we go back into shooting in November, so um, and some of that stuff is really, really funny too. So yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's nice that we have that security and that uh, ability to know how long we got and Mm. and. really just sort of settle in rather than, you know, worry. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah, we're having a great time. Great. It's like summer camp up there. <laughs> That's what It's I like heard. summer camp, but for me it's like they're all gorgeous, well-built men <laughs> and women. And uh, then this old fat man shows oh, up every once. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. I'm telling you. Suit days between Andrew and Dylan, where I have to wear a suit, and those two yeah. Adonis's are wearing suits, it's the worst. <laughs> and they always put me right in the middle. It's like a, this is what could happen to you. But, you, yeah, you and I are in our <laughs> 40s, so we we both know, you know, things can yeah, change it's in coming. 20 years. It's coming <laughs> for all of them. But I don't tell them that. I let them enjoy their yeah. beautiful bodies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, this past uh, May or June, the days and months all blurred together, I was really lucky that I got to cover the Letter Kenny panel that came down for the Austin Television Festival. And there was a Q&A, and we got, I actually got to see as part of that the first episode 
of season seven, and uh, I I know about a little bit about the more, and I'm excited um, for the you know watching the rest of the season. But one of the questions that I thought was a lot of fun for the MC to ask, and I'll I'll give you a chance since uh, for whatever reason you didn't want to come down to Austin. Oh, I don't know the story. Um, uh, <laughs> they were asked the cast was asked to share their most embarrassing Jared Kiso story. So I'll ask you, do you have one to share with us? Um, look, <laughs> I have no embarrassing stories of that. Man, other than one, I'm killing them at uh, crib. So I want to put that on the podcast so everybody knows. Uh-huh. Totally destroying them with the game of crib. <laughs> but uh, the most embarrassing thing he ever did to me was we were on tour and he filmed me uh, snoring. You can oh. check that out on his on his Twitter feed. Oh. <laughs> uh, it was the weirdest snore I've ever heard in my life, and it was me doing it. Oh. So that's my most embarrassing. <laughs> I don't think I don't I I don't know. He's so he's such a well put together human yeah. being. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. got I got nothing. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, yep, you know. got nothing. <laughs> He's a good human being, and uh, he keeps me employed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to trash your yeah. boss. Yeah, you reminded me, and we're getting close to wrapping up, but you, you did just remind me that you did the Letter Kenny live together, and I know when I was asking Kay Trevor about this, you know, audiences far and wide would love to see this come to their their towns how much fun did you have uh with with a letter oh, it's been a blast and we sort of dipped our toe into the american market and mm-hmm. uh those were amazing and the response from the americans has been uh just out of this world so yeah i i i would think more are uh on the horizon yeah. hopefully uh you know hopefully we'll make it to austin yeah, yeah, that would uh, yeah. you'd have at least me and my thirteen year old in the in the audience. But I I I know awesome. a lot of friends who who love Letterkenny, and we 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 use Letterkenny speak all the time uh, with each other. <laughs> it's pretty addictive. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. Um, is there anything we haven't talked about that you want to uh, talk about? No, I mean I'm glad we talked about my weight troubles, <laughs> and I'm really trying to. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad really you're walking. Work I'm glad that. you're walking. That's the first step. I am walking, and, uh, you know, every morning, and so hopefully it stays off. You know, that's all you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I'll give you a chance to do a full-on promo and social media promo, but I'm going to ask you my closing question. One, yeah. One word to describe your future. Uh, dead. <laughs> I mean, actuarially, that is accurate. What's that? Actuarially? Yeah, like, we're all going to die. That's my... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just I picked the end point. <laughs> I guess so. Oh, you, boy. You didn't say, like, 10 years. You said <laughs> the future. No, you're right. I should have parameterized yeah. that. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> okay well that's a wrap on comedy wham presents mark forward tell us where we can find you on social media and uh let us know let us know where we um, can catch letter i'm at oh i'm at mark forward with two d's on twitter and on instagram i'm not on facebook and uh that's where you can find me okay i also just posted a free uh you can go to youtube and watch my first special for free Ooh. That's exciting. I yeah. will be doing that. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, uh, we hope you've enjoyed learning about how Mark got to be the comedic genius that you heard today just as much as I have. And this has been Comedy Wham Presents Mark Forward. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.